Okay, good morning from the National Weather Service office in Norman. It is Saturday, May 16th, and we are going to do a severe weather briefing for you today to talk about the potential for some significant severe weather across our area today. Again, we will be uh, interacting via the uh, question box and the GoToMeeting interface. So if you have a question, type those in there right now, and we can address them as we go along. We recently updated our risk area, our risk areas for today and tonight. Uh, we've adjusted the uh, moderate risk area and um, we added some uh, hatching to that area to indicate that there is a, uh, we believe, a even higher potential for significant severe weather if things evolve as they're looking like right now. This would include places like Ponca City, Stillwater, Oklahoma City, uh, Duncan, Lawton, Hobart. Clinton, Cordell, Altus, you can see the, the hatched red area there on the screen. Now I want to start right off to say that we are, we are fairly confident there's going to be significant high-end severe thunderstorms today and the atmosphere is primed to produce tornadoes. However, this is still not a slam dunk, we guarantee it type of forecast. This is not the confidence that we had on the morning of May 19th or May 20th or May 31st. We think there's going to be a high end severe weather and there's going to be some damaging hail and there's going to be some tornadoes around, but the details are still just a little bit murky. So you have to have to bear with us on that and continue to watch for later forecasts. But this is the threat area. Just about everybody in our county warning area has an enhanced risk of severe weather. We think the uh, potential may be a little bit lower now over north central and northwest Oklahoma. We'll talk about that here in a second. Several key features that we're tracking this morning. Uh, the main thing is this uh, area of showers and thunderstorms. It's out over uh, the uh, Oklahoma and Texas panhandles. Let me jump over to radar real quick here and take a look at that. We can see those showers and thunderstorms that have kind of just been um, out in that same general area for much of the day. Uh, you can see now that there's no real significant precipitation south of I-40. You can also notice the trajectory of those showers and storms over the eastern Texas panhandle. They're projected to move up into far northwest Oklahoma, north central Oklahoma. What we believe may happen is as that convection, those thunderstorms continue to move toward the northeast, they may leave an outflow boundary in their wake, which may be somewhere uh, from Ponca City to Kingfisher down toward Cordell in that area, and maybe push even a little bit further south toward the um, toward the um, uh, I-30 or the I-44 corridor a little bit later today. Visible satellite, you can see this cluster of thunderstorms, this area of showers and thunderstorms uh, with these, these taller bright white clouds here in the northeastern Texas panhandle. But notice there's quite a few breaks in the clouds over southwestern Oklahoma, central Oklahoma, southern Oklahoma. And what we think is the, there'll be an outflow boundary somewhere right in here, uh, from, like I said, Ponca City to Kingfisher to Cordell to, to maybe north of Altus, somewhere in there, maybe sagging as far south as I-44. So what we're going to be watching very carefully is for thunderstorms, uh, models forecast thunderstorms to develop along the dry line south of I-40 and south of this current complex of thunderstorms and develop down into southwest Oklahoma. Um, Models have been very consistent in this, and they're starting to agree more and more that that's what's going to happen. One of the models that we look at, the HER model, is uh, a little bit more linear in how it develops things. Um, this is the one of the latest models of the HER model. So this one of the latest runs of the HER model. So this would be at 5 o'clock this afternoon, and we see uh, this is what that model is forecasting the radar will look like. Um, and there's just there's a line of supercells there from uh, along and south of I-40, west of Highway 81, and those move off toward the uh, east and northeast. You can't take this model literally, uh, but uh, that, that is the trend that we've been seeing, and that's what we are very concerned about. We do believe that the uh, air mass will have uh, plenty of time to destabilize there over uh, southwest Oklahoma, central Oklahoma. If you've been outside this morning, it's very windy, it's very muggy, already kind of has that feel. I don't think we'd have a lot more to do. I mean, if it clouded completely over right now, I don't know that that would put a huge damper on our severe weather potential. We've already had some heating, and given the wind shear that's going to be in place this afternoon, I think there's more than enough instability to produce supercell thunderstorms. So one of the things we're going to be watching carefully is what type of storms form. Do those remain discrete storms? 
One thing to watch today on radar, if we start seeing storms developing by noon, one o'clock out in the eastern Texas panhandle, south of I-40 or southwest Oklahoma, those storms are going to be moving into better and better air as far as more favorable wind shear and better instability for tornadoes later this afternoon. So if you look at radar at one o'clock and the storms don't look too scary looking, uh, don't turn your back on it because they could intensify and they're going to be moving into a better environment. One thing to keep in mind for your operations today is storms are going to be fast moving. Uh, these storms, it's a lot of wind shear in place, so these storms are not going to be trolling along at 20 miles an hour. These may be moving at toward the northeast and eventually toward the east at you know, 30 to 40 plus miles an hour. So for spotters, uh, storm chasers with the media and things like that, uh, it's going to be a challenge to get in position, keep up and be safe with these. Another consideration for today is there's going to be uh, hordes of uh, storm chasers, storm observers, spotters, not spotters, but people who are out there looking at the storms, uh, everybody from general public to storm chase tour groups to people from across the the world here looking for tornadoes today. So it's going to create traffic issues. It's going to create safety issues. It's going to create issues if people have safety plans that involve them driving to shelter. If you remember back what happened on May 31st of 2013, uh, there's going to be some traffic issues today, I'm afraid. So we're going to be dealing with all that. I'm going to get to questions here in just a second. Uh, the, we've shifted our tornado potential, and again, this this may change, um, and we'll we'll keep tweaking this through the day. Uh, Storm Prediction Center will be issuing an updated outlook here for their day one outlook at about 11:30 or so. But we're going to not wait for those updates. We're going to be coordinating with them, but we'll be updating our graphics faster than they have today. They're on a set schedule with outlooks and graphics, and they can only do it at. Uh, 1630 and 20Z and things like that. So we're, we're more adapt, uh, flexible to adapt to whatever's going on. So right now, the highest tornado potential we think will be along and south of where that outflow boundary sets up and east of the dry line. Right now, this looks to be that area you see shaded in yellow uh, on your map. Timing. Timing for severe weather. We could start to see thunderstorms develop along the dry line. We already have thunderstorms moving into northwest Oklahoma now, but the the, the biggest threat for severe thunderstorms uh, will be between 1 and 4 p.m. about the western third of Oklahoma, Woodward, Clinton, Altus, uh, Archer City, uh, Seymour, areas like that will be in the 1 to 4 p.m. time frame. Central Oklahoma, including Ponca City, Enid, Stillwater, all the Oklahoma City metro, Lawton, Duncan, uh, Warica, Wichita Falls, will be in that 4 to 7 o'clock time frame. Uh, that's the time frame I've given my family here, my uh, people with outdoor activities or people here in the metro area, 4 to 7 o'clock. So I, I want my family at home and settled in before 4 o'clock today, if at all possible, and uh, that's based on this 4 to 7 p.m. time frame. And the uh, threat of severe weather will continue after dark and into the evening hours into um, uh, east of a line from Stillwater to Ardmore. Okay, let me go back to this while we're talking. Let me address a few questions here. Cap strength is not really an issue today. We don't have any issues with a strong cap. Um, uh, if we did, it might be even worse. If if the you know if we had a strong enough cap, I think uh, that could suppress thunderstorms. But cap's not an issue today. Will cloud cover have an influence on severe weather later today? I don't think so. I think the even areas that are cloudy right now, especially that are south of that outflow boundary that we mentioned, uh, are going to be at a risk for severe weather. I think if you know we've had enough breaks in the clouds and the system is strong enough, the dynamics are strong enough where. Um, uh, we will have uh, severe weather pretty certainly. What we're what the questions are now is if we will see tornadoes, if we will see big tornadoes, and uh, and where those will be. So uh, this is a day to stay on high alert. There's a lot of outdoor activities going on. There's state baseball tournaments going on, and in in Yukon and in Enid and places like that. And we just hope that those people are paying attention. We hope that people with any outdoor activities, uh, lakes, um, camping, Boy Scout camps, you name it, you, you know all the things that are going on in your area. We surely hope that people are paying close attention to this. This is one of those days where uh, decisions made uh, at this time of day could, could save lives and make a huge difference later on this afternoon. 
Um, let's see, another question from the chat. We do have, I'm not sure about the Oklahoma DOT signs, but we did uh, light up the Lamar electronic billboards, 28 digital billboards in the Oklahoma City metro area. There's a message that says dangerous storms, 4 p.m. to 8 p.m. We, we, and we'll be watching for any changes necessary to those signs later today, again, to get the attention of motorists and anything we can do to uh, get that word out. Any other questions? I'll open up the phones here to see if there's any questions. I didn't talk about the flooding. There's still a flash flood watch in effect and any thunderstorms that move through the area will produce heavy rain. And if you've gotten a lot of heavy rain recently, flash flooding will develop quickly. One thing we have going for us in this situation with the flooding is that the storms will be relatively fast moving. And so they, we shouldn't have these repeated slow moving thunderstorms uh, moving over and over across the same area. We have not sent out the slides. I'm going to try to send out those slides, but I had a, a strange incident with my email yesterday. So you may get the slides from a different email address here uh, in a little bit. Uh, Red Cross recovery workers, people working, uh, serve more, whoever working in uh, the metro area, Bridge Creek, anybody like that. I would certainly, if I were in charge of groups like that, I would probably want them out of the field by three to four o'clock today just to be safe. Uh, because as I said, once these storms get going, they're going to be moving relatively quickly and we, we don't want people stuck out there. Um, any other questions? Okay, we're going to be very active in NWS chat today. Um, we've have, we're beefing up our staffing right now and we'll continue to do that through the day. We're gearing up for a big, a big, big day for severe weather and you should be too. Again, um, Things could still change a little bit. Things could go down as far as the threat level a little bit. We sure are hoping that that happens, but uh, we are we're confident enough that there could be some serious thunderstorms with big damaging hail and potentially tornadoes that we want to get the word out. So, um, that David, somebody asked about training storms or multiple storms. I'd be alert for multiple storms. We could have storms develop early, earlier in the afternoon, and then have more develop. Um, later this evening. So uh, I would not expect just one round of thunderstorms with this. I would expect potentially uh, two or, or hopefully not more rounds of thunderstorms uh, this afternoon and tonight. Okay, uh, we're going to hang up here and let you guys and ladies and gentlemen get to work. And thank you for joining us. We don't have another one of these planned for tomorrow. We are here. We're answering the phone. We're on chat. We're on social media. Um, if you send me an email, please know that I may have difficulty answering immediately because I've got problems, but I'll, I'll do my best. So good luck out there today. Please, everybody, stay safe. And uh, I hope, that, uh, hope this forecast is completely dead wrong, but... Uh, We'll be ready just in case. Good luck. Have a good afternoon.